Hey everybody! Oh well. <laughs> Why? Why? All right, hold on. This one turns it off, right? Yeah. The middle one turns the light oh. off. Yeah, I had to have the light on because okay. the lady from the homeowners insurance was in here taking pictures of everything, yeah. Yeah. in case anything gets stolen or the ship runs down or something. Right. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Danny rolled on now, but uh, said he just saw The Omen for the first time. Oh, he'd never seen that? And it was pretty good, and he was like looking forward to the rest of the series. I was like, wow. But, I, you know, I guess that could happen. That's, I really like The Omen. It's still kind of like one of my comfort food kind of movies. That whole series is good. It is, yeah. I actually do uh, yeah. like all of The first one's the best one, but, um, but yeah. the other ones are good, too. I liked the last one. Yeah, they're all pretty kick-ass. Yeah. Um, the final conflict and shit. Yeah, the so I, Christ. <laughs> so I felt kind of bad that we got cut off yesterday, but we were having a bitch of a time with the connection. We couldn't really get it to come back on. And, and a storm hit, so that had yeah. To do. I think it might have been that because there was like a storm coming. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really realize it. I thought it was just kind of like rainy, but then like a little bit after it was then just lightning like, came. Yeah. And it was just kind of like. Because so I never, I never watched the weather. It know. affected it somewhere else. I mean, we were mostly done talking about the movie anyway. Yeah. The crocodile movie. Yeah. So, uh, oh, a couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, Murder Hornet said, "I'm glad you're here because I, I got your present and I forgot to put them on screen and I wanted to show them. Yeah. Yeah. I have them back there, like ba I had yeah. them back there, but I forgot to put them on screen. A little Mexican. Look at, look at these. Look how cool they are. A little Mexicans. Yeah, crossing. I got these the other day. Whoa. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. I like the back of them. Those are like really cool. Yeah. I love that. And then today, I'm not entirely sure who it's from, but today we got a box from Chewy yeah. and it was addressed to Pookie Ashford. Yeah, Pookie Ashford. <laughs> it's a big old box of those damn those tuna chew sticks. Those she loves them. Those Shiba meat sticks. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, whoever sent those, because man, she is like a big fan. I was about half asleep and Jenny put them in the put them next. I said, "Oh look, next somebody says." And I went back to sleep. I was kind of dozing back off on her, and and Pookie was fucking digging through that all the piles. <laughs> she jumped pile. at the box. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> she she can recognize them. She goes, "Look." Yeah. Oh, yeah, a whole yeah. so bounty. Give me those. Yeah. I put them in the drawer. And she's like, oh, we're trying. They're well, all gone. We told you we're trying yeah. to like ration them. Yeah. Because I got a bunch like the other day, but yeah. Because she doesn't. She likes the other flavors. Like there's chicken and salmon and something and beef. I think she likes those, but they're kind of eh. Yeah. But the tuna ones, for some reason, she fucking she she will take those over temptations. Yeah. Like they've knocked temptations off the top of the. Yeah, she's meat. now trying to live off of those damn meat sticks. Yeah, she keeps coming in the room yeah. like every couple minutes and like going to the drawer and be like meat stick. Another one? Yeah, that's like no. And then, and then she gives you like a yeah. little face like. Yeah, and then she starts begging like no, and she's oh, oh. <laughs> And, no, then she, and then she just yeah. looks, she big eyes, like yeah. she looks at you like Tries all to get sad. Tries cuter and cuter and <laughs> try to look sad. Like, really? Then yeah, you're like, no. God damn it. Because <laughs> she knows if she looks at you cute enough, yeah. long enough, then she'll get one because you can't stand it. Like with her little face. But uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So. Freaking RC. Yeah. The official cola of Burt Reynolds. <laughs> it's rockin' cockin' it's, cola. Yeah, it's fucking Royal Crown. No need for me too. Says Tom's quote of the day. Man, does she live off those meat sticks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The girl oh, yeah. living off them meat sticks. I know, so dirty. Yeah. Every man's fans. <laughs> living. Thing off is, it's sticks. not just one man's meat sticks. It's meat sticks coming from every fucking direction. <laughs> yeah, oh, all different God. sizes and flavors of meat sticks. <laughs> All right, so this is a good movie last night. We saw uh, fucking Burt Reynolds. Uh, no, it's Burt not Burt Reynolds. It's Charles Bronson. Charles this Bronson. is completely different thinking people. Burt. Charles Bronson movie was called The Assassination. Well, it's just called Assassination. Assassination. That's what it's called. Assassination. It had like, I think initially it was, was going to be called The President's Wife. Yeah. Uh, and it was called yeah. that for a really long time. And they're like, nah, we don't really want to call it that. Like that Charles Bronson was like, yeah, I thought it was disrespectful. And also he's like, that doesn't really sound like a movie that Charles Bronson would be in. Uh, yeah. So then they changed it to The Assassin. Um, yeah. But then they're like, no, we're going to change it to just like Assassination. Yeah. So you had been wanting to see this for a while. It's yeah. free on YouTube. Yeah, and it's a canon movie. It's a canon. Yeah, film. we didn't know that it was a canon movie. And it was yeah. like a little bit of a later canon film. I yeah. feel like they, 
Because when did Canon go out of business? Like uh, late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, this was eighty. 80s. This was eighty seven. It was around this time that it went out. Of and business. you can tell yeah. that no, not to shit on the movie because it is pretty entertaining, but you can tell that this was a uh, pretty low budget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty low budget. But they're they're trying to they're they're trying to show you a fucking movie. Jenny called it. She goes, "Man, this is like America. Fuck yeah, the movie. <laughs> it is. This is definitely. I kind of feel like fuck all yeah, of all of Canon's movies in the '80s yeah. were um, collectively America. Fuck yeah, the movie. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that was kind of their whole like niche in the market. Yeah, it's every fuck. It, okay, this this movie is every American stereotype kind of just woven into this fucking narrative. And it turns out that it it is an action movie. Eventually, it gets and it's it's borrowing from fucking from fucking Delta Force, Delta Force from yeah, Chuck big, Norris. Big time. Borrowing all, all kinds of all kinds <laughs> of crazy shit happens in it. Chuck Norris plays like head of Chuck Norris is not. I mean, Chuck Norris. Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. Again, it's two different, completely yeah, I'm getting, different. I'm getting people. crazy. <laughs> Charles Bronson. What's it? Is there something else in that RC that you're not telling us about? <laughs> Charles Bronson <laughs> plays like uh, he's like head of the fucking security detail. He's like for Secret first, Service. Secret Service for yeah. the for, for the for the uh, for the first lady, and <laughs> all kinds of fucking crazy shit happens in this. Like Charles Bronson's wife's in it. She's playing the president's Jill lady. Jill Ireland. Yeah, Jill Ireland. This is like a couple years before she died. She. This is her first movie after her breast cancer treatment. Yeah, so it's like three years after. So it's like she hadn't made a movie in about three years, but she looks great in it. Um, I, yeah, it's hard to believe that she's like fifty in the movie. She yeah. looks real young. She's fifty or fifty-one, yeah, something yeah. like that. Looks real young, real cute. Um, and uh, but they, me and Jenny were always talking about like a uh, way they dressed back then, fucking in the eighties. It's just the generation gap is fucking amazing, you know. But all kinds of crazy shit happens in this movie. They fucking go. Everything is patriotic as fuck, all right? Everyone looks like a fucking secret agent. Everyone looks like a fucking Republican in this. <laughs> every, every, yeah, everybody looks everybody like Nancy look, Reagan, pretty Everybody much. looks like Nancy everybody Reagan. Everybody has big, huge hair yeah. with feathers. And I yeah. kind of laughed because there was one point where... There was like an explosion or gunfire yeah. or something like that, and one of the one of the uh, women, the uh, it's the, now now you got me doing it. I was gonna, I almost said yeah. Chuck Norris, yeah. uh, Charles Bronson's partner. Um, she like dives for the ground, and yeah. I and I laughed my ass off because her hair like this wings of her hair just went whoo, like in one piece because of yep. all the hair, right? Yeah. And then like the back was back there, and I'm like, yep, it's that's the '80s, yeah. all right. <laughs> it's like this one like two wings of hair moving like that. Charles Bronson's sidekick is like this little uh, Vietnamese uh, chick who's coming on to him through the whole fucking movie, and it's kind of unrealistic as fuck. I mean, she's, she's like 30 or 40 years younger than him, I she, feel like. Yeah. She's probably in her mid-30s in this movie. And I guess Charlie is supposed to be playing a guy in his early 50s, I guess. But he's clearly a guy in his fucking mid to late 60s. You know? He looks okay for his age, you know. But this is not the same Charles. This is not a 50-year-old or a 40-year-old Charles Bronson. You can, you can tell, okay? Um... He still does a great job acting. I mean, he's he's making his money. He's being Charles Bronson. But it's just, it's uncomfortable. This fucking yeah, it's, relationship. It's a little creepy. Yeah, and then it's a little creepy. She's fucking, she's fucking jocking in, like you know, like she's fantasizing. I guess it's and you're less, not really buying it. It's less creepy because she's more the instigator. He's yeah, just kind of like, like nah, 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 we just like nah. work together. Right, I, yeah. He never says like you're too young for me, even though she obvious, very obviously is. But yeah. um, she does like just keep trying to ride that dick. So like, yeah. every time she sees him, she makes like some kind of sexual innuendo. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then finally, finally, about... he gives in. Yeah. And you know, you know, me and Jenny were talking about it. <laughs> it wasn't so much his his age; it was the generations, the way he. Yeah. Talked. They were yeah. very stuffy the way that they looked and act acted. Uh, I mean, Mick Jagger at sixty was. Nothing like, say, you know, Charles Bronson at 60. Big difference. You know, yeah, that's what I was... And I think, difference. Yeah, and I've said this on the show before. It's not David so much... David Bowie the, at 60 was fucking... Right. He was, he was, you know... It's not so much the age. Yeah, it was... It's just their whole... The way the they persona, carry themselves, their whole persona. Dress, yeah. Shit like that. Just nothing sexy about him. Nothing. 
about his clothes. Well, because or nothing. You, you said when they were like in the car and she was just she was making really really obvious yeah. like, hey, want to have sex? Want to have sex? Yeah. And he's just like, would you stop? And um, she, well, he didn't yeah. do that. He kind of like deflected yeah. or kind of like funny funny. But, uh, you know, finally, like, he hits it, and Tom's like, oh, he's having that Asian experience. And I was like, yeah, and she's having that grandpa experience. Yeah, 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 Asian experience. <laughs> it, well, it, 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 brought me, it brought me to uh, that dynamic right there was, was, was bringing me some Seagal-ism, Stig- some you know what I mean? A bit. That yeah, was bringing me some Seagal. And I kind of feel like... it's worth seeing, man. You got to see it. I mean, I don't think... <laughs> and I'll get into this in a minute, because this is, like, kind of weird to me. I yeah. don't think that that was necessarily, like, Charles Bronson's idea to no. put her in the movie. I think they wanted to put her in the movie because Jill Ireland, who was playing uh, the first lady, who was ostensibly, like, um, you know, Charles Bronson's actual, like, other love interest, yeah. I kind of feel like maybe the producers thought, well, maybe Jill Ireland is too old, so we need to put, like, a younger, hotter woman in the movie. I'm just saying that that's j- how Hollywood producers would have seen it. Uh, because Jill Ireland, she was 50 or 51 in this. Like I said, this was her first movie that she had made uh, since she'd gone through breast cancer treatment. And, you know, she looks great and she looks beautiful. But by 80s standards, they would have thought, well, she's like too old. Yeah. So they would have had some, uh, they would have needed another woman in there that was much younger for like eye candy. Well, they knew that the audience probably the average age is probably about twenty. That's what I'm saying. That they're they're saying, well, it's probably younger guys watching yeah. this, so we have to put like a young hot woman yeah, in 22, it. Twenty two, twenty three, but a lot of guys, a lot of guys <laughs> on VHS that were watching were teenagers. Because there weren't really any other no. women in the movie other than those no. two. No, and uh, man, there's some fucking wild shit. One of the boats that they're on is called the Spread Eagle, and I, it's I got fucking and patriotic laughed. shit on it. It's uh, it's just. I was like, that sounds like a porn boat. Yeah, this movie <laughs> this movie seems to have been written by foreigners who are kind of imagining an America. You know, this is like a foreigner's interpretation of what America is. I'm not sure who like. wrote this, but you know it seems like you that. know who directed it? The guy who directed it was a guy named Peter Hunt, and he actually did a fuck ton of movies and uh he wasn't a director on a lot of them but he was an editor and second unit director he did a fuck ton of tv he directed um on her majesty's secret service okay yeah, that's pretty uh good. he directed gulliver's travels right. he was actually like an editor and or second unit director on most of the bond films okay. like the older ones yeah so you so know they got a good dude they got i mean this dude. is might have been one of the yeah. one of the last if not the last film that he did okay yeah the movie is actually competently done it yeah. looks pretty good um it's it's low budget but but they kind of did everything they could to get cool helicopters and guns and uh, motorcycles in it. There's some motorcycle chase scenes, a lot of fucking Charles Bronson shooting fucking AT4 and law rockets at dudes on motorcycles. Uh, assassins showing up with fucking rare uh, uh, rare machine guns. Like there's a, uh, I think Richard, no, it's not Richard. I don't remember the name of the, the company, but there was a little boutique shop that made something called the M16K, which was a 10-inch fucking collapsible stock fucking M16, had adjustable gas ports on it. Back in the back in the late 80s, that gun was hot as fuck. They didn't make very many of them. It was just a little commando carbine. One of the assassins shows up with that. That was a trip. Little little short triangular round handguards, I think, and no front sight. Front sight was in a carrying handle. Weird. It's just uh, I don't know why they did that. It's just something that you could. It was made in California, but they had a lot of neat guns, HK pistols, uh, or or yeah, it was an HK. I think it was the VP9. I think is what that thing was called. Or no, it's the new one. Uh, just you can look up. There's a database that shows like guns of whatever movie you want. You can just Google it, and it it came up. And I looked at all the guns that were in there. Rockets and rocket launchers and shit. Yeah, so a lot, there are a lot of rocket launchers. Yeah, a lot of rocket launchers. Uh, <laughs> Not yeah, <that> I'm complaining. <laughs> a lot of Mac tens. Uh, there's one scene where Charles Brownson jumps on a fucking dirt bike and is chasing another guy across a field, and he shoots him with a Mac ten. And I think the Mac ten was mounted to the handlebars of the motorcycle, wasn't it? It looked like it. looked it. like it was. I mean, because it looked like he was... Yeah. I mean, this was crazy. Like, there was also one where he was in a speedboat, and the bad guy was on a jet ski. Yeah. And they were shooting at each other, like, from the... And I was just yeah. like, obviously no one was hitting jack right. shit, because yeah. how could you? 
Right. But you know what I mean? So uh, we didn't even talk about the plot of this movie. So the plot of this movie, yeah, Jill plot. Ireland plays the first lady. Now, uh, it's, it's a new administration that's coming, right? A new presidential administration, okay? Yeah. Now, uh, Charles Bronson plays a guy named <laughs> Jay Killian, or Killy, as he's yeah. known, by, by his sidekick. And uh, so I guess that under the previous administration, he was like high up like on pr presidential protection duty, but for whatever reason, he gets what he feels is a demotion because he's like, now, now that the new administration has come in, now you're going to be assigned to the first lady or one mama uh, to her security detail. Now, just like in a lot of these movies, particularly in the 80s, uh, <laughs> They really do not hit it off. Uh, Jill Ireland as the first lady. Uh, her name's Laura, right? Yeah. yeah. Like Laura me, like Laramie, me, yeah. Um, cause there, there's a whole thing about that. Uh, she is like a deeply unpleasant woman who does not think that she needs a security detail. She just wants to do whatever the fuck she wants to do. Uh, she really does not like Charles Bronson. So you know they're going to kind of fall in love later on. Um, and she's kind of like everybody talks about her like she's this ball-breaking uh, bitch and a half, you know what I mean? What did they did that one guy calls her an ERA nut at some point? Is he talking about her? No, he's talking about a nut. Uh, or he talking was talking about, about another. another. He didn't call her an ERA nut. He called her a uh, a, a woman's rights nut. She goes, one of them women's rights nuts. She kept patting me on the ass. I was fucking. I was started laughing. Deal with it, bitch. His. I just thought it was very funny. Cultural artifact of the times <laughs> where. A guy was thinking that well, she's a women's right advocate. She is a sexual aggressor. You know, she's the sexist pig. She yeah. keeps fucking having my ass. That was the interpretation of the time. I just laughed. There's a lot of funny shit in this movie. It man. was very funny. A lot of funny shit in this movie. It was very funny. And I don't think that was intended. It was just. <laughs> it might not have been. I don't, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of shit in the movie that was just funny. I think unintentionally, just aged so weird. Yeah. Know? Just fucking hilarious. So yeah, so she's a very, very unpleasant person, and she keeps trying to like uh, give everybody the slip because, like I said, she just wants to do what the fuck she wants to do, and she's like, I don't like this first lady shit where everybody's like watching me all the time. Which I, you know, I can't blame her. So uh, yeah, so she does this one thing where she goes to they go to some big like to do. And she puts on what is very obviously a terrible disguise. Like, she's supposed to be, like, a hippie or something. Yeah. But she comes out with this, like, ridiculous wig, like, a fringed leather jacket. Yeah. And she has, like, a little radio. And she's, like, dancing all weirdly, yeah. which you would think would, like, draw even more attention. She's supposed to be kind of like an early heavy metal chick who listened to, say, like, you know, Bon Jovi. That's I guess. That's that what that's that that supposed to be. Oh, we weren't we red again. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, come There's back. back. Okay. Yeah, she's supposed to be like somebody, a Bon Jovi fan with the fringe on the jacket. Was that what it was? She looked kind of hippie-ish to me, but... No. I, it was 87. That was a little late for hippies. Yeah. Although there was like a hippie like resurgence in the late 80s, early 90s, I feel like. So maybe it was that. I yeah. don't really know. But I can't yeah. believe we're losing this stream again. Is it going to storm again? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe it'll be all right. We'll just, just keep right. talking. We're fine. But, um, yeah... So she escapes out from under, but Charles Bronson is on to her. So he kind of follows her and then he's like, okay, you know, whatever. I'll just like, we'll go on this cross country thing. Cause like I said, they did do some shots in Washington DC for this, but this is what I mean when I'm saying that Cannon was like saving money on the shit because I feel like they probably used stock footage of the buildings, I would imagine, or they did kind of like a film and run because I'm, I'm imagining getting permits to film some of that stuff wasn't cheap, even in the 80s. Um, some of the stuff that they filmed outside was clearly, clearly not DC because there were palm trees. So there was that. And also uh, a lot of the movie, like after the first lady like takes off, there's kind of they kind of go on the road so it's like a road trip these assassins like trying to kill her and charles bronson is like trying to figure out why people want to kill her um and for a while they do kind of like a red herring thing where maybe the assassins are trying to kill him although they never really go too much into that i don't think I, they maybe they did and i didn't catch it get a poke 
Okay, maybe. It says it's reconnected. Up. Yeah, okay. All well, right. I'm just waiting for it to go green and waiting for the kilobytes per second to go back okay. up. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so they're trying to set up, like, this burgeoning romance between the two of them. Like I said, who were married in real life at the time. We were actually married until she died three years after this came out. And the weird thing about it, though, is that they make it kind of, like, okay by essentially saying, yeah, me and the president, like, we have an understanding. Yeah. She's like, I just married him because I liked him. He was my friend and he needed a wife like when he was running for office because nobody trusts a bachelor, blah, blah, blah. But essentially, they don't say this outright, but I think this is what they mean. Essentially, uh, he got his dick shot off in the war, right? Yeah. Or he, or he, crash. he was in a plane crash and yeah. it made him quote unquote impotent. So I was like, so he lost his dick in the war. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so the fact that yeah, she, yeah, they said, they, I think they just said that because he said he read the files. So he must yeah. think he was gone. That's what, well, I yeah. mean, that's what I took from it. They didn't yeah. say that. Right. But I thought, I kind of read between the lines yeah. on that. I was like, yeah, he lost his dick in the war. Impotent shit. They could fix that. That's what I was saying. Yeah. That's Even what I meant. back then. I said it had to be something a little yeah. bit more than that. He put it down. So he's like smooth like a Ken doll down yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> they just put a damn balloon in that shit. <laughs> Dude pumping it up on his nut. I mean, we shouldn't laugh, but because yeah. some people do have that, yeah. have that problem. But I just thought it was funny that they wanted to like make this romance between them okay by saying, "Well, you know, I don't have sex with him, even though we're married, and I just married him for convenience, like for political reasons." And you know, after he, you know, won, like now we're thinking about like going our way, own way, because I don't. She's like, because I don't really like being under the scrutiny all the time. I like to just, like, live my own life. But then the weird thing about it is that they set all of that up, but then Charles Bronson ends up with the young... Yeah. I mean, they don't... Like, they leave it a little bit ambiguous because she says... I mean, what, what the fuck was her name? What was her... I don't know. I can't remember what her character's name was. The characters are just... I don't she wanna... wasn't... That, that actress yeah. wasn't in a lot of movies. She's, she's actually... Three. She's a dancer. Yeah. Um, she was in a chorus line, and she was yeah. in some other. So that's she was more a dancer than an actor. She was only yeah. in like three movies, uh, including this one. And so I thought that was really weird. And I was like, how weird would it be, like, because uh, uh, Charles Bronson and Jill Ireland were in. It's yeah. just gonna keep doing this, apparently. I just I just didn't want you to. Yeah. Okay, I think it's back on. Now. All right, should be good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. it was. It, look, it's a candid movie. They were kind of made for kids. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to think about it. You the, you just watch a thing to see some people shoot each other and fucking some motorcycles and uh, to see some shit blow up. And they're trolling you through the whole fucking movie. The name of the butt was Spread Eagle. I mean, all yeah. kinds of shit. They all kinds of shit happened. I was like, they were trolling. I was like, what? It, what? But it was good, you know. It was. <laughs> what? So I don't even remember all the fucking trolls that they came came at it. I don't away. either, but actually, like, it, really, it think it was kind of funny. I yeah. did think it was kind of funny. Yeah, all of the uh, particularly funny to me was, like I said, the the girl that was his partner. Um, like every single time she saw him, she was basically she would say something like she would come in his hotel room and be like, "Those pants going on or coming off?" Yeah, you know what I mean. It's well, like oh my god, I was like, "Oh my god, she's yeah. so fucking thirsty." Well, she's supposed to be the comedic relief. Yeah, I guess she's so. the clown of the movie, really. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's not really. T it, 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 I don't. You're not supposed to take it seriously. He doesn't take it seriously. It, it almost seems like they're joking. He's just like, whatever. Like, we yeah, work together. Yeah, I'm not going right, there. Right. But then he does go there. Yeah. And then he says stuff like, well, did, didn't he say? Ending. Didn't he say at some point too that she was like, um, you know, oh, she asked why don't you move in here with me, and he says I might die from terminal orgasm. Yeah, he did. Like that. Yeah. Charles Bronson. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was almost exactly yeah. that. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Yeah, terminal orgasm. Here at this stupid. It's back. I don't know what the fuck is up with this shit. I don't either. It's like you know. <laughs> Yeah, it reconnected and it's weak. Yeah, it's like I guess okay. Yeah. Well, the weather's shitty and it's just yeah. like I kind of hope that it. There's some data going on. Huh? I guess. Yeah. I mean, I hope that it straightens itself out before to show. Yeah, we'll still have to see. You know, okay, it's green again now. Yeah, right. some people are like get you know, logging off because it's like too it keeps yeah. buffering. All right, well, let's go ahead and shut it down then. I mean, that, we pretty much finished it. Yeah, we did. So, uh, so yeah. Sorry about this, you guys. Um, I'm gonna try and figure out something else. Uh, you know, maybe. Yeah, maybe we have to get that thing rolling. 
Is that working? Yeah. You got that working? Okay. Yeah, that is working. That's why I don't understand like why it's still fucking up on me. But yeah, so um, hopefully this will be sorted out by tomorrow evening. We're doing the show about the Dingo Ate My Baby case. Okay. Which would be the death of Azaria Chamberlain. So hopefully you can all make it for that.